Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. And before I proceed, I'd just like to say thank you uh, to those of you that have uh, the support what I do. And a big thank you to, <coughs> excuse me, a big thank you to my cough that uh, came out of nowhere. A big thank you to those that have sent me PayPal gifts. Much appreciated. So, um, what I thought I would do today, because I've not felt very well for the last few days and been very sleepy so if I was to sit down and do this I would very likely very likely fall asleep <sighs> so what I thought I would do um, and it's a bit cold in here as well the temperature's really dropped a bit it's, uh, it's that time, isn't it? That time of the year. It's October now. I don't know what day it is. It's, uh, I don't know. Middle of October. And it's, it's not the 26th. It's a week before the 26th. Because boxing's on next week. So, I don't know. 18th? 19th? Nine, yeah, it's the 19th of October. And, uh, <sighs> uh, so yeah, I've been sleeping a lot. And my whole um, sleep pattern has been turned upside down. So now I'm awake during the day and sleeping at night. But also sleeping a bit during the day as well. So I'm kind of, what is it? It's about nine o'clock, just about quarter past nine. It's nine twenty-three, and I'm ready for bed. It's weird. Um, a week ago, I was going to bed about seven. It's on a Saturday morning as well, I'd, or Sunday morning. I'd be going to bed. Sometimes eight o'clock, eight or nine. <laughs> so it's all a bit weird, a bit strange. So yeah, I've just been the temperatures. It's like a high of fifteen degrees or fourteen degrees, a low of five degrees. That's during the day. It's quite a big difference, isn't it? It's quite a big. Uh, change in temperature and now it's night time I'm guessing it's probably quite cold-ish out there so but I've got all the windows open plus I'm walking around in swimming trunks so I'm probably not doing myself any favours so what I thought I would do, what I thought I would do today is do what I was going to do a while ago and give you a tour of my flat, which means I'm going to move around, which will keep me awake. So there's going to be a few little noises, just, you know, my footsteps. Andre's just jumped off the bed. Do you want to get back on? I was like, does he want to get back on the bed? He's very clever. He's just realised 
he tries normally climbs on the bed but from the front like the bed's against the wall and he climbs and now he's realised all he's got to do is climb up the dirty laundry which is at the bottom of the bed and just pretty much just step onto the bed it's very clever it's only taken him four years to work it out but yeah he's clever <laughs> dear oh dear he could have done that the last four years has been dirty laundry it's not the same dirty laundry I do use the washing machine it's always been there just at the bottom of the bed and he could have just climbed up I'm going to close the door not the door the window draw the curtains this can be like one of those ASMR video, video things all those wonderful sounds so I'll have lived here in April five years so what is it now October November December January February March April so four and a half years I've lived here and I don't know really what to say about the place it's yeah it's all right it's got more stuff in it than it did before I moved in but then when I moved in there wasn't anything here wasn't a cooker wasn't a fridge wasn't a washing machine there wasn't a freezer there wasn't any furniture there wasn't even a carpet it did have doors though had light switches but no electricity because that was all turned off so luckily it was April when I came and looked at the place and it's quite a, it was first thing in the morning and it's fairly bright at that time of the year but if it had been in November at that time in the morning I reckon it would have been quite dull in here quite dark without the lights so anyway last time I went to do a tour of this place I got as far as the light bulb in the hallway so I'm going to actually just go through the thing so I've got the front door oh the front door has made a weird noise that's strange it's got the front door there's one two three four five six locks on it from the inside uh, so it's quite secure on the inside um, I've got a ceiling which is I'm probably about six foot nine so I reckon the ceiling about eight foot high I reckon six, five six yeah it's got to be about eight foot which is quite high isn't it it's quite a high ceiling so pretty much anyone however tall they are are not going to bang their head on the ceiling but if they were more than six four they probably struggled to get through the door you know the doorways would have to crouch down a bit because I have five six yeah maybe six six it's hard to judge without uh, one of those things that measures stuff but then to fit, if you were six foot like six foot nine or seven foot 
you wouldn't leave the doors well I imagine you wouldn't leave the door frame as it is would you you'd make it bigger I mean you want to live somewhere where you have to keep crouching down would you that would be kind of silly I don't know I'm just guessing I don't I'm not an expert on height or doorways all I know is all the doorways most of the doorways I can walk through easily although to be fair if I walk through my body kind of takes up most of the doorway width wise but I can still walk through but I didn't realise that oh, that'll explain why my arms keep they bang against the the door frames as I walk through so I've got oh. I never noticed that before I'm just trying it with every door yeah I thought I was just being a bit clumsy but it's just I kind of I, wow how strange I've got uh, chaffed elbows I wonder if I walk through the door sideways or if I walk through it'd be like answering you know someone says to you so which shoe do you put on first which sock do you put on first and to think about it like I'm not sure even though we do this stuff naturally and probably in the same order every single time guaranteed I put the socks on the same one and I don't know which ones I put on first left or right I don't know as I try and think about it do you put your underpants on before the trousers I don't know now now I'm thinking about it I can't. it's like I'm not sure Do you wipe before you flush? <laughs> yes, yes. So, let me have a look. So the door, that's really weird, I want I don't walk sideways through that. would be like living like a crab, wouldn't it? Huh. So, I'm back, I'm back. So, the front door... It's just a standard front door. Um, got some paper on the floor in front of the front door for Andre, because that's one of his, f <laughs> of all the places, the most ridiculous place to go to the toilet, just in, in the front door. Just, it's just ridiculous. But nothing, I couldn't do anything to stop him, apart from locking him in a room and I don't want to do that because being locked in a room isn't nice which is why I try not to do that with him for any length of time so that's there I've got a light switch just on the on the inside the front door and sellotape to it it's a piece of paper and I sometimes put it on the front door and it says Recording, please do not disturb. Or, recording, please do not disturb. And so there's a light bulb, and there's a little. For some reason, my cleaner doesn't seem to have turned up for about three years. I just realised it's very dusty. It's almost like, you know, the Adams Family or Dracula castle kind of cobwebs and stuff. Oh. 
So I've got a mirror. As I go in, something else that needs cleaning. This is really weird. I didn't even notice it till now. So there's a mirror on the left hand side as I come in. And when I when I moved in, my dad um, brought some stuff in that was from my, was my nan's. Um, I'm not sure if that mirror was my nan's, but it might have been. Anyway, he he put it up, and I think he thought I wanted it in the living room, but I said no in the in the hallway. Why? What do you mean why? Why do you want it in the hallway near the front door? So why do you think I want it in the hallway near the front door? He said, I don't know, that's why I'm asking, why? I said, isn't it obvious? He said, listen son, don't make me send you to the naughty step. I said, okay, okay. I said, the reason I want the mirror near the front door is because that's, I can, before I leave my home, I can check for bogeys. Make sure I haven't got little bogeys up my nose or anything like that. Or any sleep in my eye. You know, it's just, it's what we do, isn't it? I don't want to be walking around and have a big bogey sticking out and not realise it. I mean, smile at everyone. Or, perhaps I should have said, or cabbage in my teeth. But I really have cabbage for breakfast. You, you know, I kind of just check, check myself out, make sure that I'm... I really am as beautiful as I think I am. But mainly it's for bogeys, just to check. I think that was it. I did, I had a, had a bogey incident years ago. That wasn't a bogey incident, it was a whitehead. Oh yeah, and this wasn't when I was young. Well, I was younger. I mean, you know, I was younger before I started this recording. But I was, what was I, 19, and I'd been working all night in this factory, and it was a Saturday morning, and they asked, the, the supervisors asked me, or they asked the night shift, if we'd like to stay on till 12 o'clock, overtime, because they needed to get a, a, you know, shipment done or something. So I said, yeah, all right then. And uh, the Saturday morning people came in, and I think they, I think they worked, or they might have been there all day. I don't know. <clears throat> but I met a lady who ended up being my girlfriend for a little while, and she was uh, called Michelle. And the reason I remember her because she was important in my life. And I thought I was doing really well because she was laughing and everything. I get home and I got the biggest white head pimple, like, you know, near my mouth. It was, and I'd asked her out and she said yes. I knew then. That she clearly wasn't fussy who she dated. <laughs> no, I, I knew then that if she liked me, even with this big pussy pimple that was, it took up half, it didn't take half, up half my face, but it was very noticeable. I thought, this, something she must like me. Either that or she just likes pimples. I mean, you, know, you don't know, do you? So, uh, yeah, I don't want to talk about her, but I'm just saying that's kind of why. It's just a check, have a little check before. <sighs> so that's why I've got a mirror there. And my dad put it up. I don't know how he did it, so that's going to be there forever. I've got no idea how to take it down. 
um, it will be there. It, it, I can never remove it. I don't know how it stays against the wall. It kind of sticks there, and I don't know how he's done it. I'm trying to look down the side. Some kind of contraption that is built that keeps it stuck up. It's amazing. My dad's so good with that stuff. He's he knows how to do all. He can basically build a house in an afternoon. You know, he's he's it's not nothing he can't do. Um, apart from empathy. No, I'm joking. There's nothing he can't do. He's he's just a weird swift kind of practical stuff. And I'm not. And that's an understatement. I'm really, really not. Um, I had trouble with a light bulb a couple of years ago and I had a tantrum and I ended up with a broken hand. I'm just... It's ridiculous. It's... Practical things frustrate me. And so I, I need help with stuff like that. But I do ask for help. So... I think that's that's quite a um, it's a good step forward I think if we can acknowledge because we've all got things that we struggle with haven't we or perhaps we just have a bit of a blank mind over um, my, my list is kind of endless but practical things uh, like putting up shelves or um, changing a plug I attempted it once and I blew up a light I might not, not with dynamite I mean I actually blew the thing you know it's like and I got taught how to change plugs at school I suppose they have instructions inside the plug on how to do it And you know what makes it even worse is I worked in a factory where I was actually putting plugs on appliances and I did that all day long. I just remembered that. Wow. Anyway, let's move on from there. I'll just have a quick little drink. So, <clears throat> I've got the hallway. I'm walking back down the hallway. Facing where the door is, but on the right, and a bit further on the right, there's a, uh, like a coat rack. Not the ones that stand up under like a tree, you know, that kind of thing. But this is just one that sticks against the wall. And there's three uh, metal hooks on a piece of wood. And my dad put it on the, on the wall for me. Again, that could have been my nan's as well. He doesn't like to chuck things out, my dad. He likes to make use of things. and Which is, again, something else to... I've not really so I don't chuck things out so much I just I don't know Just I don't collect things either if that makes sense I don't collect junk um, but this this coat rack's really good it's, well, it's a coat rack I mean I'm I'm, ne I'm probably never going to get excited over a coat rack unless it was made of chocolate and I might get excited Um, and he said where do you want it I said I'll have it near the mirror I'll just have it just above the radiator he said <laughs> so honestly I, can you, I can't believe I had this conversation he said what do you want it there for I said what 
said, why do you want it there? Are you sure you want it there? I said, yeah, that's where I want it. He said, why? And this is genuinely a conversation I had, why? I said, because, well, first of all, isn't it makes sense to have the coat rack near the front door because that's the exit and entrance for which I gain access and leave this particular premises, which is where I would have my coat. And he said, why don't you just have them on a coat rack in, in this storage room? Because I don't think he wanted to put a rack up. He, I don't think he might have wanted it for something else. Maybe he was going to have it for his, I don't know, some kind of weird key collection that he's got. But I don't know. Said, well, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe he didn't want me to have the coat rack. It's not a rack, but a coat, uh, hook, board thing. He said, well, why do you want it above the radio? What do you want it there for? He was getting a bit grumpy. I think he just like didn't want to put it up or something. I said, because when it's raining, yeah. He said, yeah, it, it rains. We're in England. It happens quite a lot. At this point, I was just, he was winding me up. I said, when it's raining, a coat gets wet. Where better to put it than above the radiator so it dries out? He said, oh, I suppose. And he started laughing. He thought, I answered, actually, you're right. And we had a, and we had a little dance to the Kangan. It was quite nice. So that was good, so I got those. <clears throat> the radiator's there. There's a hat on the radiator. Although I can't wear that hat because Andre's been doing things to it. So I'm gonna have to wash that before I wear it. I don't wanna go into de details, but yeah. So as I come through the hallway, there's the, um, uh, is it thermostat? You know, you can turn the heating on and off or up and down. So that's there. I don't even know if the heating's actually on. Heating's not even on, that's why it's cold. But it's on to come on at 20. From the sounds of it, it's just coming on, which means it must be 20 degrees in there. Or just gone under 20 degrees. Which isn't really cold, is it? How strange. So I'm walking up my hallway um, from the front door. There is a storage room. I can't even bother to look in there. But it's um, because it's, it makes all the paper from the carpet go up. And But it's a fairly big storage room. It's got stuff in there. Storage. If I turn left, this is my bedroom. Here we are, I'm in my bedroom. And it's very different from your bedroom. And you might think, oh, how do you know that? How can you, how dare you be so presumptuous to think that you have some kind of uh, original bedroom, like no one else would have a bedroom like yours. You think you're special. I've got a garden shed in my bedroom. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, you, it is different from mine. Yeah, I, I don't never heard of anyone with a garden shed in their bedroom. It's a very, you know, it's almost like why it's cold in here. It's a garden shed seems to have come with its own temperature. It's almost it's supposed to be outside in the cold. So it just keeps keeps the bedroom cold. Very weird. It's got its own uh, environment, its own ecosystem. So, luckily, I'm very lucky. I've got big, big rooms. I mean, not I don't mean 
bench and size rooms. But imagine you've got a garden shed, you'd think there'd be there'd be no more room for anything else in a bedroom. But there is. Um I could fit another I could fit another two whole sheds in here plus another one but it'd have to be shaped differently, if that makes sense. So there's there's enough room for my double bed. I've got a two two big bookcases, one either side of the room. I've got a set of drawers and a big, big long radiator. And because um, that's another good thing about this flat is the windows are big. I don't know how big, but one of the biggest windows in a f place I've lived. I don't know why they're so big. But then it's really weird because the windows are big in both the bedroom and the living room. But there's no light in the hallway at all. There's the light, there's the light switch and the light bulb that's connected through wires to the light switch. But there's no actual light coming into the hallway. So when you come in here, even in the summer, you've got to turn the light on. It's not pitch black, I mean it's not. But when you've got a little ferret doing little, uh, leaving little presents around the place, you need to have the light on, trust me, just in case. And uh, I've got, so I've got the, I started trying to put the foam the uh, soundproof and foam onto the shed on the outside and I think only one piece I don't know one two a few of the pieces have stuck one just fell off it just gave up straight away and a few other pieces are just half on half off I thought about getting a staple gun and attaching the soundproof in that way but it looks like I've got a well enough soundproofing for inside and out. But it's still a weird smell in there. I mean, weirder than normal in the bedroom. And it's it's that wood, woody smell. And I know that that will go. The smell will just be part of the room wouldn't it it would just be you know I don't know if that makes sense it would just be part of whatever's in here and I'm lucky I don't get any damp in here or anything like that because um, if there was damp I imagine having a wood shed wouldn't wouldn't be ideal that would probably soak the damp the damp up wouldn't it The, the wooden the, the the garden shed it's going to be my recording studio I'm going to open the door and inside the shed blimey looks like part of it's already fallen apart already there's um, there's a chair it's a nice, almost like a counselling chair, the kind of chair that you'd st I'd sit in if I was a counsellor. So it's a nice chair and a little stool in front of it, somewhere to put the um, put a, a drink or something on. Um, it's not a, it's not a huge amount of room to do much in there. It, I think, if anything, it'd be more garden shed to put tools in as opposed to um, I don't know like making pottery or whatever people doing garden sheds 
So I've got my bed on the left hand side. My favourite place. There's a quilt on there. And if I pull back the quilt, it goes over. There is a little Andre laid flat down on his tummy, fast asleep. I'll put that back, leave him alone. So we just sleep on the bed. I've got t-shirts hanging up on coat hangers on the rack of the curtain rack for the you know the window. What the hell? If, I reckon the window is at least as wide as I am tall. Actually, probably more. Probably about six foot. It's really hard to work it out. It's, yeah, it's quite wide. Yeah, it's taller than me. And the radio is t even longer than the window. So that's the bedroom. I've got lots of. Uh, a few spiders in here as well, which is it's all right. Uh, the ceiling's pretty much the same in each room. So now as we come out, the living room is on the left-hand side. It's bigger than the bedroom, but there's not a lot in it. I mean, there's no bed, there's no shit. No, I don't mean uh, there's not a lot of difference in. Uh, let's have a look. No, it's quite much bigger actually. It's the same width, but the length is. So if the bed's there, yeah, it's, it's bigger, it is bigger, but it's hard to kind of figure it out. I know it's bigger because both rooms were measured for the carpet. I know the living room is bigger, a fair bit bigger than the bedroom, but not a lot. But if we'd have put the carpet that was this carpet well, the bedroom carpet wouldn't be enough to fit in here so we've got all the furniture out of the bedroom and the shed got the carpet up got all the furniture out of here out of the living room and got the carpet up and then moved the carpet from the bedroom into the living room it wouldn't cover the whole of the floor. Which is why I don't bother doing it. So, so on, as we come in here, I, I like to have a few, uh, I've written on the walls, which I know is not normal, but uh, potentially, but there's a couple of things I've written down. Uh, one is on the the door frame, and this is as I leave the front room or the living room. I call it the front room, or the living room. It's not really the front room because it's at the back. Or it could be the dining room. It's everything but the bedroom. Well, it's not the kitchen or the bathroom. But it says on the frame just above the door I deserve to be happy which I think is a beautiful thing to have I wrote that there probably a couple of years ago and I've also put a few these ones and that's actually written in like marker pen but I've only done that in a couple of places uh, but the rest is pieces of paper that I've written on and on the actual front door, the, the living room door, 
as you go in. It's actually pushed back at the moment because I find that's the easiest way to walk in and out of it rather than having to keep pushing it. And it says, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And that's from Dan Penye. So that's uh, one of his sayings. And next to that is, I've got another one on the wall. It says, when you've got the desire, you've got the energy. I've no idea what that means, but sounds good. And another one nearer the window. It says, uh, for things to change for you, you've got to change. That annoys me a little bit sometimes. <laughs> um, oh, I've got another one I wrote years ago. And this is from Buddy Holly. The best way to fail is to try to please everyone. Which I think is quite cool. Then I've got another one above my window. And it says... Excellence is not a singular act, but a habit. You are what you do repeatedly. And then the last one in this room is a piece of paper and it's taped to the TV. Um, what do you call it? Not table television the thing the television's on not the stand oh it's, yeah it's a television stand isn't it I suppose yeah it's wooden and I got that from again I think that was my nan's um, so I've got this piece of paper and it's directly under the telly so whenever I'm watching the telly it's there in my lower peripheral we become what we think about so these are some things I'm trying to sign to kind of get into my my psyche and uh, that one particularly we become what we think about and anyone that's been in here that's read that laugh at it and think it's stupid It's, I think the, the sentence needs a bit of explanation for some people because I've, I've heard detailed explanations about what that sentence means it just makes sense to me but maybe I'd have mocked it if I'd have seen it without knowing what it, what it kind of was referring to it's all that state of mind and um, and on the right on the, on the wall the other side of the wall or the other wall the other side of the room I've got some post-it notes don't know where the heck they went I lost them they're not post-it notes they're you know those cards that you can like all index cards that's it and they're coloured ones they've got blue green pink yellow and I've just put on things that are happening in the future a few things to look forward to and uh, most of it is just boxing and stuff there was a television thing I put on there and uh, if I've got an appointment or something What I've missed out though is <laughs> the junk in here. Not the junk, but there's a lot of Andre's toys. There's a lot of stuff in here. I and mean, I've got two bookcases where most of my books are at the moment. And stuff on top as well but more hypnosis stuff is basically in here I've got a small bookcase on the end which is near the radiator and 
it's a little bit messy. Ever since I got this shed, things have kind of have got out of place a little bit. I've got a whiteboard, you know, the thing that you write um, stuff on. Uh, I think they probably have them at school and stuff nowadays, don't they? And I say it like I don't know what happens at school. Or, mind you, it was 10 years ago that I was at university. Can you believe it? It's over 10 years since I left. Ridiculous. But um, I've got one of those that's going to go on the wall. Because I want to start working out some recordings, like what I want to say, and if I can get my head around writing a book. and Just a bit of preparation, you know. I've never really prepared. I'd like to see if I'm able to prepare for things. Put a bit of, uh, you hear that's a fridge in the background, that's the kitchen, so I'm coming back in here. So that's the bookcases on the left, the window is right ahead of me, so again, so I think is it, I'm guessing, yeah, that's, that makes sense, it's exactly the same size as the other window, however, there's a whole you can I can now see the difference in the rooms because there's not let's have a look at the other room let me go back in there where that window ends there's only a short space on the other side but with this one there's another few feet of space. Yeah, so I've not really looked at it before. I knew there was a window there. I mean, I'm not. I'm just like suddenly. Oh wait a minute! What's that thing that lets light in? No, I know there's a window, but I hadn't really paid much attention to size because. I'm not that superficial. And the radiator's there as well, underneath the window. I wish someone one day would explain to me why you have a radiator under the window. The worst place to have a radiator. Have it where the wind, you know, have it, why? That's where the heat's going to be released, isn't it? Out the window. Why not have it at the other side of the room? <sighs> or move the window to the other side of the room. So I've got a sit-up board in here. Um, I, an abdominal board thing. I used to have it in the bedroom, but there's no room anymore. Not really. It takes up a bit of space. I thought it was going to be a fold-up one, but... Mind you, I think it might have been, but when I sat on it, it just clicked. And I've not been able to move it since. On the right-hand side, the television. And on the other side of the wall, there's a punch bag. Which is attached to the side of the wall with a bracket. So I've got my punch bag there. It's my Everlast punch bag. So it should last forever, I guess. And there's a turn round, face the opposite way from the television. There's my big black squeaky chair that's falling apart. It looks like it's been on a really good holiday. Overdid the sunbathing. And now the skin's just peeling off. Because that's what's happening. The, the outer layer is peeling off on both the headrest and both of the armrests. And to the left of that, or to the right of the chair, there's a little table, similar to what people have in hospital. Um, you know, the one that goes across the bed, but not quite that size. Uh, like a that kind of thing and I have that 
it's just like a somewhere to put stuff I always find flat surfaces are quite useful for when you need a flat surface and behind the chair is a lamp and it's one of the kind of lamps that blind you when it's turned on when you're not ready for it <laughs> so you can turn it up and down you know as far as volume or whatever volume is in in light and you can if you have it on full and you just switch the on button at the plug it just burns your retinas it's so bright and the reason I know this is because my nan used to have one now mine is mine I bought that myself years ago because uh, I used to live in a uh, I always say dungeon it wasn't a dungeon um, it's like we were right underground uh, I don't know but it was very dull very dark in there even with the light on it was so I needed to get some proper lighting so I got two lights extra and that was one of the ones I got and it's very bright but my, what my nan used to do is and she she had um, visual issues so she you know she she needed to have the light on but she didn't she didn't warn us so there was no issue of her having the light on because that's what she, it's her house and you know what I mean I'd I'd have put it on for her but we needed preparation because we'd just be sitting there and suddenly she just switch it on without us knowing it and we'd like be screaming like ah it was so bright and um, but really bright when you're not ready for it it was just so bright in fact I think it's brighter than my one I mean she, hers was like super honestly I think the sun would have got envious it was that bright but um, oh, the good times. So I got a table, which my nan, uh, and a couple of chairs, which my nan uh, I inherited from my nan. So there's a table. It's wooden. I always remember where it used to be in her place, because she. Um, had it in her because she was in a residential place and she had it there and I don't think she hardly ever used it and I used to sometimes sit there and um, you know, have a cup of tea and I'd sit in the chairs and everything was fine but as soon as I moved here I sat down on one of the chairs and it broke underneath me now I know that I've put a little bit of weight on since you know, 2013 or whatever it was. But not that much. I mean, realistically, there was probably only... The last time I sat in a chair would have probably been December 2013. No, 2014. And then I inherited it in April 2015. I didn't put on a lot of, that much weight since then. Seriously, it's like, what? But yeah, the, the chair broke under me. And my dad had to reinforce them. We didn't have to, but he, he chose to reinforce the chairs, which was good. It's like, what on earth, you know? A chair should just work, shouldn't it? Maybe I'm naive, but I think a chair should just work. That's what I think. And uh, so that's the whole of this room. 
pretty much done. I don't have a big book collection anymore, but I've got a few. How many have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 30, I've only 61, 61, 62, 62. So yeah, I've only got 62 hypnosis books now. Used to have a lot more than that. And I've got some therapy books. I've got like therapy books as well, counseling and NLP and stuff like that. But yeah, it's... Uh, my book collection, my library is very small compared to what it used to be. Oh, I found another hypnosis one. So it's 62. No, it's not. It's part of the ones I've already counted. No, it patterns one though. That's a hypnosis book. So 63. 64 transformations. 64. And. Yeah. 64. I thought I had. Yeah. I lose track of what one is. So 64 hypnosis books. Andre, I can't believe he came in here just to do that and then he ran off. It's amazing. He's such a naughty boy. Um, I'll take you into the bathroom. <sighs> Gotta get out of that room. Now, the bathroom is a little bit echoey, but it's bright. I've got a light, light in there, which is always handy, isn't it? But it's a bright light. So it's, a, it's a very white room. And I cleaned the bath. Got, uh, recently and I used to have a lot of stuff in here uh, like I think 18 cans of deodorant all stacked up and loads of toilet roll and soap and toothpaste and because I like to stock stuff up in case uh, of an emergency I don't know what kind of <laughs> toothpaste emergency there would be but um, but now what I've done, I've put it away because I've got this fairly good sized storage cupboard, which I imagine would have been the airing cupboard in the old days. And that's, there's loads of room in there for, for things. So I keep, just keep it all in there. So it makes it all a bit tidier I like I like things to be tidy and my dad put up a bathroom um, a hook for a towel near the bath and he put up another um, towel rail but it's one that you can put the towel across that, and it's just above the radiator so it can dry the towel and he also put up a another hook for my dressing gown which is opposite the bog I mean the toilet and he's put up um, a bathroom cabinet well, he put, this is years ago but he put that up so he did a lot you know he did put a lot of stuff up um, it's very very generous very kind of him to do all that and so as I go into the kitchen it 
it's a little bit of sound in here so I'm gonna stay out a little bit so it's not too loud but he put another rack up above the radiator in the kitchen for the towels and I've got two cupboards attached to the wall that they're there when I came in again fairly big kitchen window uh, there was already a gap there for the cooker so I bought a new cooker and there was a gap for the washing machine so I bought a washing machine when I moved in uh, I bought a fridge and my dad gave me a little freezer and then I bought myself another freezer which was because uh, it's nice you know I, I like to try and it's good to have you know space and have stuff uh, not every, everything really squashed together you know it's nice to be able to get to stuff and again I, I minimalised stuff as well minimalised uh, so there's not too much on the counters but Andre's this big plastic tub with Andre's food in it uh, the wet food in pa it's in packets but and I actually found some packets some, some wet food this is cat food with gravy which he likes now I normally get him Felix it's the brand I went to Aldi's a couple of days ago or it might have been yesterday I, I don't know and uh I think it was like one pound eighty nine for twelve packets, twelve sachets of food, instead of it's normally about three pound fifty for the Felix ones. So I thought I'll buy these, and I put it out for him, and he sniffed it, and he didn't touch it, and I thought I will get hungry, and this was early evening, you know, about six. I think it'll, it'll get hungry and he'll eat it. Got out this morning. Hadn't touched it. Rather go hungry than eat that cheap stuff. Really, he's so fussy. I thought it was just cats that were fussy. Dogs generally don't seem to care. Just eat anything. I know cats can be proper fussy. But he's he's a ferret. You know, in in the wild, he'd have to eat whatever he could get his whatever he could get hold of. He'd have to eat whether it was worms or spiders or cauliflower. I don't know, cauliflower and cheese. It's but no, he'd have to go through this. We're talking about an animal, right? His idea of, of absolute bliss was to be able to get down the drain into the sewer that would be his happiest moment of his life all he wants to do is get down those drains he sniffs at them and he's like one day but I'll give him a, a different type of food mm, hate that smell don't like that absolutely amazes me well I'm in this I managed to stay awake for this recording. Thank you for listening. I wish everybody well. Hope that I managed to bore you to sleep. And uh, sorry for Andre's uh, passing of a wind earlier. He can't believe he, he keeps doing that. That's why it's pretty best, you know, if I do it in the shed, he can't, but. Um, that's okay. Well, I'm going to go now. So, thank you for listening. And remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.